we just took a look at how to make basic tables more accessible, but oftentimes data tables can be a lot more complex. Let's take a look at some advanced tips. So as you can see here, we're using the same table that we've been using in previous videos, just with slightly different styling. Now in many web applications, you'll need to get across some complex information. And oftentimes the best way to do that is with a slightly more complex table. Now first we're going to be adding some headers and then we're going to add in some prices. So first I am going to open up a new row here inside of our T head. And I'm going to put some header cells and I'm going to make them span across three columns. And we're going to say premium quality and close that out. And then we'll just go ahead and copy and paste this line. And instead of premium quality, we'll say regular quality. And we do need to add a cell right here for this all to line up. And we're going to copy and paste peaches, pears, and apples here so that we have a second set of those, one for premium quality and one for regular quality. And then down here for the states, we need to expand out New York to seven columns and California as well to seven columns. So when we switch back and refresh, you can see that our headers are now quite a bit more complex. The only thing that we need to do now is just put in some prices and rather than type them all out, I'm just going to paste them in from off screen here. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace our entire T body here. So we'll start at the top there and just replace it just like that. So when we switch back and refresh, Excellent. So now we have a complex table with all the data filled in. Now, if you were to ask a sighted person what the most expensive pair here is, they could pick it out pretty easily. If you just scan over the numbers here, you can see that four is the highest priced pair. And then we can correlate this number with the header cells that we've made. So we can see that it is indeed a pair it's a fresh pair, it's in California, and it's of premium quality. But imagine trying to figure that out using a screen reader. Sure, you could find the highest price just by having the entire table read to you, but then you would have to know the fruit, the state, and so on. Well, complex tables like this with multiple headers are significantly more difficult for screen readers to parse. So they should be avoided if at all possible, but sometimes you don't really have a choice, especially in scientific, financial, or engineering applications. Fortunately, there are some things we can do to make this better for users that utilize assistive devices. There are two approaches to this. You could use the scope, call, and row to group together cells that all reside in the same column and row, in fact, this is what the W3C recommends. In practice, this doesn't really work very well for screen readers. A slightly better solution that's more usable is to use the headers attribute in tandem with the ID attribute. So let's first add some ID attributes to our headers. I'm going to be pasting in a lot of code here, but I'll explain it as I go along. So first, we're just going to replace our entire T head here with some newer code. There we go. And the thing that I want you to notice here is that I added the IDs premium quality and regular quality to the first row here. Then in the next row, I put the IDs on each fruit and I appended a short note to the end to denote whether or not they're under premium or regular. Remember, IDs have to be unique, so appending those notes is a necessary step. Another thing to be aware of is that the screen reader won't actually read the ID out. These are just there so that we can associate a particular table cell with a particular header. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the entire T body, and again, I'll go ahead and explain this once I've put it in here. There we go. Now, this is a lot of code. 
and we've replaced the entire T body. Again, I've done a very similar thing here. I've added an ID to each one of the states. So you can see the ID New York here, and there's also one for California. And I've added an ID to the header cells for canned and fresh fruit. For each of those, the state abbreviation is appended just so we can keep track of which state the canned or fresh table header is under. Now we come to the part where we're actually associating the table cells with the IDs. To associate them, we use the headers attribute, which you can see right along here. Let's take a look at a single cell and analyze the headers attribute and try to associate it with the proper headers. So here we have premium quality peaches from New York and they're also canned. We're using each one of the IDs that this particular price falls under in the proper order separated by spaces. When a screen reader comes across this cell right here, it should read as column two, row four, premium quality peaches, New York canned, dollar three. And if we just switch back to Google Chrome, you can go ahead and see that exact table cell right here. Again, it will read as column two, which is right here, row four, which is right here, premium quality peaches, New York canned, dollar three. That's how we can make tables with two headers more accessible. In the next video, we'll learn what we need to do for tables with three levels of headers.